good morning good morning uh, may god bless you and uh, um, welcome fellow journalists to the welcome online welcome fellow journalists to the online 40 days under military coup in Myanmar and civil disobedience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we begin the press conference, I will read some house rules. First, uh, turn off your mic during the press conference. Please respect our speakers. Second one, um, you may turn on your video if you're comfortable enough. And the third one, type us in the chat room if you want to ask and wait uh, for the moderator to call your name and give you permission to ask questions. Uh, the fourth one, uh, the press conference will conduct in English, but we provide simultaneous interpreter for Indonesian journalists. You can click to the, you can select the globe, globe symbol and choose Bahasa Indonesia to, to hear Bahasa Indonesia. And as well, you can uh, choose English whenever uh, someone speaks in Bahasa Indonesia. So first of all, on behalf of Southeast Asia Freedom of Expression Network, SafeNet, I would like to say thank you for coming in the short notice. Uh, I know this is holiday since uh, yesterday in Indonesia, but thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Damar Juniarto. I'm the executive director of SafeNet, digital rights organization in Southeast Asia. We deeply concern uh, over what is happening in Myanmar right now and stand by uh, Myanmar people to reject the coup. May revolution will win. Uh, today, 12 March 2021 is exactly 40 days after a military coup on the morning of uh, 1st uh, February 2021 that overthrew the existing uh, NLD-led uh, government in Myanmar and prevented the newly elected parliament from holding its initial meeting. Uh, we read the news and also receive uh, updates that up to now, the military Tatmadaw has arrested more than uh, 500 people, including elected members of parliament, chief ministers, artists, students, journalists, social activists, and sadly, many civilians who joined the peace protest brutally killed by the Tatmadaw. On five, uh, February 5th, 2021, a group of lawfully elected, elected members of the new parliament, now in hiding, established the C CRPH to represent the interests of parliament and the people of Myanmar. While the people of Myanmar fight back the coup of Tatmadaw a nation, nationwide with the civil disobedience movement. Uh, many of them took the streets and urged the military junta to step down and recognize the 2020 election result. So uh, let me introduce uh, our respective speakers today. First is uh, Tin Sao Heng. He is a co-founder of Yon uh, Ted Sot. Welcome, Tinso. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Daman, for your invitation and to speak out for today as a representative of and young Ted So let's start off from the movement. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, next, Dr. Sasa, a special envoy of CRPH. Thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, Welcome, Dr. Sasa. If you are already in the room, thank, uh, thank you for joining us. Dr. Sasa found uh, Health and Hope work in the ethnic minority region of Chin State. Uh, he has been invited to the NLD to join the ministerial post, but uh, you know that uh, during the military coup of, uh, in the morning, uh, Dr. Sasa, who was uh, at that time uh, with the uh, Dao An Si uh, uh, he uh, able to elude the Tatmadaw and uh, slip uh, out the country, leave the country to a safe place. Dr. Sasa, are you already join us? Okay, not yet, probably some technicalities. Next, I will introduce uh, 
Miss Yuyun, Her Excellency Miss Yuyun Wahyu Ningrum. She is the representative of Indonesia to the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission of Human Rights. Welcome, Her Excellency Yuyun. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Ms. Yijun has spent 22 years working in the human rights organization uh, in national and regional and international level. And uh, right now she will uh, represent the ICHA uh, from Indonesia and uh, hopefully uh, she will explain to us is the strategy of the Asian region. Now, uh, because all the respective speaker have joining us this morning, I uh, will let uh, first my friend, my colleague from Myanmar, Tin Sao Hain, to explain the res resistant movement on the ground. The time is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dhamman, for, for the time for me. So let's say uh, today is like the 40th day of military coup in Myanmar. And now, like you all may know, you may all see that what is happening in Myanmar, but I would like to a uh, brief scenario about what is happening in Myanmar and about to present the voice of Myanmar, I say, uh, to, to represent in how we are, you know, uh, fighting and, and against the military coup in here. So let's say, uh, currently, like, for the protest, like, uh, we have, Currently, 73 people are already dead, according to like post. It's hard, you know, it's really hard to, you know, express my feeling and also talk about what is happening here in yesterday in my town. It's my native town, even my native town. Like an M group, I mean, so in Myai, in Myai, where is, where is my native town? Like, people are trying to take back their people, like they take, they detain people in Myanmar with their security force, like police and military. And people are just, you know, protest to take back their people. So they simply, uh, you know, sign, peacefully protest for that. And they kill, I mean, they, they kill headshot by people in there. I mean, they can shoot, I mean, the end of the body. Why, why they shoot? Headshot, you know, you can see the photo. It's horrible. It's really horrible to present and to talk about this issue in here. It's, it happened yesterday. It's really, I might be quite emotional, you know. It ended so well. It ended so well. It's, it's a crime. It's, it's kind of genocide for that they are doing it. They, they have to, they have responsibility for that. And they have, we show that they were, they will get what they did, what they do, what they did for them. People. This is what I promised to nine people, yeah. And so every day they do like human rights violation and arrest the people. And so it means, so even they arrest, they are, you know, you, you might see the video and they just, the one who arrested simply and they shoot from the backside. Why? Even they didn't have a weapon. I mean, they, why, why they are trying to kill as a war? I mean, they are just, doing like a word for the like protest people. Yet over 100, 100 people are today in there. And so they, and you might see one of the like energy pol political leader was killed under the today. It's, it's, it's nightmare for it. It's an incentive event for it, you know? And also like, even though in capsule, they are not allowed to go out like 8 p.m. to the 4 p.m. in here and the internet is shut down. And so they are trying to check the household to, to, to oppress, you know, everything, what they can. It's about the strike. And as a whole, when we see about the CDM, so they are trying to force for railway station worker and as a uh, teacher, the teacher who are trying to process peacefully in, in front of their office. And they shoot and they kill, you know, teacher. And also in Michina, in Kachin State, they also like, it's hard, it's really hard to expect the feeling what is happening in Myanmar, you know. And also like in CDM, so the good thing like the police, the one who they, they don't want to obey their order, they try to do this, they try, they join 
see that this opinion movement in in here and so we are also welcoming them to to not to obey about the order what to kill the people and so in here in 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 strike uh as you might see in strike that you can see in the whole country is showing like over around i might say 10 million around 10 million people are you know gathering in nationwide and trying to protest and and came together and also showing that and also solidarity showing that solidarity to against the military cop in here and we well we don't we don't want any more for the military with the data sheet in in 21st century it should be no more in 21st century for the military data sheet or military cop in here we are even generation z generation f uh, generation y or generation z all the generation are trying to show with the solidarity we don't want military cop and we don't want military leadership in 21st century it's it shouldn't be anymore and so like we also trying to deal with the uh ethnic m group ethnic m organization and also uh political body from bami state and also from the uh, ethnic eo gray eo state so we're trying to or oh, work together to against to to work with them yeah this is this is the current situation in Myanmar, and also like I'm trying to bring about this one. Yeah, thank. Thank you, Tin, uh, for the sharing uh, and also explain what is the latest situation in Myanmar. I'm agree with you. It's a crime against humanity when someone uh, doing post peaceful protest and then shot in the head. Um, uh, deeply concerned of the situation. And hopefully, you uh, stay safe and keep fighting. The second uh, place, because Dr. Sasa have joined us, I will let um, my Yuyun to um, to give the to present an original perspective on this matter, and then also please sharing with us as well what is the next step uh, for ASEAN because ASEAN people are uh, really concerning about this situation as well and we are a little bit grieved because the ASEAN as the organization uh, not stepping uh, not doing enough uh, effort to push the Padma down the, pay, the time and place is yours Uh, thank you very much, uh, Damar, and thank you very much, uh, Sehnat, uh, for hosting this important press conference. And uh, uh, I would like to use this opportunity also to show uh, concern of, uh, to Tinzo Hain on the situation in Myanmar. Uh, perhaps you you continue to hear that people concern, 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 and no action. I can understand that that situation, but I think it is very, very important to express that ICHR Indonesia is uh, very concerned about situation and continue monitoring. We continue to talk about this, this situation and try to find out uh, how we can help uh, the people in Myanmar. Uh, we means uh, ICHR Indonesia and also the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia. We never not talking about Myanmar these days. So I would like to read my statement to make it more uh, succinct and systematic. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, uh, depending on where, 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 wherever you are. I'm speaking here not as ICHR or as an Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights, but as representative of Indonesia to the ICHR, uh, based on our statement on the 5th February 2021, only four countries uh, in ICHR denounced the coup, which is Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, and Singapore. So this statement is the continuation from uh, uh, our statement earlier. I've been monitoring closely the situation in Myanmar. I receive a lot of messages, written statements, emails, Facebook messages, uh, direct messages through Twitter, WhatsApp uh, messages, and all possible means that many people in Myanmar and all people uh, a part of the uh, in in from different part of the world want to show their concerns over the situation in the country. Uh, for your information, almost all of the insights, inputs, suggestions, and calls have been followed up 
up in different ways uh, and have shaped the policies uh, of ICER Indonesia and ICER and Indonesia uh, in general in our response to the crisis. I would like to repeat the calls that we have been uh, calling uh, in the previous statements. First is to ensure the safety of civilians in the country and call for military and security forces to stop using forces against the protesters. Second, restore uh, democracy by having an inclusive dialogue. Third, repeat, uh, uh, respect the will of the people and release all political detainees. What we have been seeing so far after 40 days of the coup, more than 2,000 people are detained and arbitrary, arbitrary arrested, including the protesters and those who are staying at home. The situation show escalation rather than de-escalation. We also saw true videos that circulated in social media that security forces beat uh, protesters, medics, students, pregnant women, and bystanders. Video we received so far also show the security forces destroy property, looting, sh looting shops, firing indiscriminately into people's homes. Junta has also systematically destroyed legal protection, violating freedom of expression, assembly and association, right to life and right to privacy. With the current measures to revoke permits for media, Junta has violated freedom of expression, freedom of press. Junta also declared trade union as prohibited organization. They kidnap people and civilians in the evening. Since the coup in Myanmar, military has targeted and forcibly displaced several thousand members of ethnic nationalities from their home. Some of them were my friends, whom I know very well. My observation is that, first, the act committed by junta, such as murders, imprisonment, enforced disappearances, and the attack of civilians are part of coordinated campaign rather than ad hoc or reactive, or it is an isolated act. It is planned and coordinated. Second, these acts are intentionally directed against civilians rather than combatant. Third, it is widespread systematic and in their frequency. Fourth, it is well organized and coordinated by the military forces. And fifth, it is carried out with the, with the knowledge of a senior leadership, which means there might be a comment from security, uh, from, security uh, from uh, military leaders. Uh, I think when, when one nun uh, was uh, uh, showing herself uh, and calling for stop uh, uh, firing to the security forces. And the security forces said, we just do what we ask to do. So it means that there is a, there is a uh, common uh, instruction for them to, to, to shoot, to, to, to uh, uh, perform fires. Lately, I also received information that number of people on the street is decreasing uh, with different reasons, fatigue, lack of uh, lack of uh, logistic kid, uh, was kidnapped as well as uh, killed and people are desperate however we are still facing the reality that not all states uh, in the world and also in ASEAN have the same views and are not ready to act nevertheless we can form coalition of willing those who can act can immediately do whatever they can and use all possible tools available in this occasion, I would like to use this opportunity to call for ASEAN to follow up their chairman statement on uh, 2nd March 2021, 20, uh, particularly on the ASEAN readiness to assist Myanmar in a positive, peaceful, and constructive manner. The chair and the member states of ASEAN should quickly find ways to help Myanmar to end the crisis. Thank you very much. Is that all, Ms. Yun? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Yun, for your time. Uh, right now, we are uh, still uh, waiting for Dr. Sasa from CRPH to join. But uh, apparently, because he's not joining uh, on time, I will open for the question and answer session. So for everyone who joining already joining uh, this uh, Zoom meeting, 
you can ask questions to the speakers, to Tin Sao and also to Miss Yuyun directly. Uh, I will ask you to type uh, ask on the chat room first. And then uh, after I read your name, I will call your name. And then uh, the host will give you permission to ask questions. Thank you. So um, we also received uh, some questions in email and also in YouTube. Uh, since this is uh, the press conference uh, broadcast in our YouTube live, YouTube channel. The first one, I think this is coming from uh, Tuso. Uh, she said on March the 3rd, 2021, over 300 university students uh, were arrested and we don't know how long they, they will detain without any uh, relevant reasons. So uh, I think this one is by Yuyun. The question will be, is this something that we, something that uh, maybe uh, we can do to help them? Uh, I heard also uh, many arrested uh, still going on uh, all over the cities in Myanmar right now, uh, whenever people doing the uh, uh, peaceful protests. Um, if the question is when, uh, we also do not know when they are going to re be released, but I think it is very important for ICHER, especially ICHER Indonesia and, and as well as the government in the region to express the concern about this and express uh, disagreement of what uh, uh, military junta has done. Um, again, this is something that we can do from outside, but we a uh, uh, number of lobbies, I guess, have been also uh, in place. Uh, but again, uh, um, in terms of when they are going to be released, we are uh, also in the same stage as your as as yours uh, we do not know when but we we should uh, um, uh, do whatever we can from uh, wherever we we are thank you uh, miss Yuyun. um i think uh, a lot of questions uh, directly uh, Uh, coming to uh, for Dr. Sasa, but Dr. Sasa haven't joined us. So I will ask question, my personal questions to Tinso. So Tinso, uh, I know this is it's not an easy uh, situation for you and uh, everyone in, in Myanmar right now. Uh, um, we heard that uh, uh, you have a big protest, right? Uh, in 22 February 2021. Uh, what is the meaning of uh, those big protests for you? And also, uh, is uh, what do you think? Uh, will civil disobedience movement as strategy will work to fight uh, against the Tatmada? Um. Uh, please unmute first. Let me talk about, about uh, our strategy for the CDMs, uh, civil disobedience movement, how it work. It's like, it's quite work. It's uh, like factors really, like extremely work for the uh, military regime that we, let's say for the currently we have three uh, major, three major uh, uh, ministry that try to uh, uh, do uh, like three major, but and also another like, uh, yeah, government department are also part of the CDM. Let, let's say for the like ministerial head is the major one that trying to do the uh, CDM. And so uh, about the transportation, kind of like uh, railways, railway. And so like, so sim, like it means so when when it it means so when you trying to like control when you trying to like govern some institution. So you you what you are order need to be. You and all right need to be obeyed by your people, but it means so. The you you are people 
didn't listen what you said means you are not legitimate to govern for ten step. It means you are not totally legitimate to to govern or to uh, to order for us. So this is what we are trying to against the military group. So they are showing that so you are not our uh, supreme to a uh, leader to to give the order or to do to do what we want to do. Like so, yeah, this is the quite helpful pressure for the government, uh, for the North government is kind of the uh, terrorist organization or military regime or military gov um, that they cannot control. It's even in, in, in like uh, administration, because of the village and what administration is quite important in Myanmar. So that now uh, village and what administrator are trying to do part of the CDM. So they did not accept about the village and threat administrator for to gather in, in village and what level. So, And also like about the CDM, so we also try to, and like kind of, and if the, first, the first time, so we have like some, some challenges that we have like lack of coordination between each other. And also like the military also trying to pressure on CDM support or organization and also send to the J and trying to detain the leader of the um, CDM, uh, CDM movement leader and CDM support. But now we have like, or, or like 19, 19 like CDM support organization have a, and different platform and with the same, with same, same, same strategy and same uh, supporting to each other. And also another one is we also link with the CBIH. So to like to granny about the um, government staff that they need to obey to their like uh, legitimate government. I mean, for the CBIH or legitimate means. So I'm, I'm not saying about the 2008 constitution, legitimate means. So, how people are, uh, people, people try, I mean, people, um, like how people support to them. I'm not meaning for the constitution, so I'm meaning to how people are trying to uh, support to them. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, this is about the CDM movement. And also we are trying to uh, work together for to, uh, to, to increase more than all the CDM in here. And another one like, uh, about like in we say like twenty uh, second uh, February and two thousand twenty one is kind of we in, we have like uh, ADA and also we have also trying to call twenty two like fight two. It means so it try we have like different slogan we have different demand like in ethnic area and also in and uh, you know so like so we have different demand in with the protest but in in this so we came together and we solidarity to fight the military group. We have different men, but we came together to end leadership. We don't want any more leadership in 21st century and we don't want any more military coup in 21st century. It, it shouldn't be any more in 21st century. Not only in Myanmar, but also in the whole country, the whole, the whole world. That's why we came together and we show solidarity to end the leadership in here. Yeah, this is my question. Thank you. Thank you, Tin. Uh, yeah. I will uh, interruption. So next question is coming from uh, Mahdi uh, from Compass Daily. He asked question through YouTube. Uh, the question uh, directly to Ms. Yuyun. What do you think about four scenarios to solve Myanmar coup written by Dr. Rizal Sukma? It was published at Compass Daily yesterday. The time is yours. Okay, so for the uh, for the interests of everyone here, uh, so I read again these uh, four proposals from uh, Dr. Rizal Sukma as as written in Compass Daily. It is written in Bahasa Indonesia, so I just immediately translate. The first scenario uh, for reconciliation is that international community, including ASEAN, uh, managed to persuade that Madao to return this, the the power to uh, civilian government uh, with the promise that there will be amnesty to the uh, to the military. Second scenario is uh, a model of Thailand in 1992. Uh, in this model, Tatmadaw refused to return the power to NLD, uh, but agreed to form a temporary government that will be led by 
uh, a person that is not from NLD or not from Tatmadaw. And uh, the third scenario is that um, Tatmadaw promised to implement, uh, uh, to, uh, to, imp to, to conduct the uh, election uh, within one year as uh, their promise. Uh, with uh, while waiting for that uh, election, they will be doing some some of the promises they they have made during the announcement of a uh, state of emergency. And the fourth uh, scenario uh, is to um, aim, uh, to have the responsibility to protect. Uh, 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 will be uh, could be implemented. So, well, judging from, uh, of course, uh, uh, military is military, but uh, military in 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 Indonesia and in Myanmar will be different. But I think the first scenario is something that uh, perhaps workable. This scenario will uh, people in Myanmar will not like this scenario because of the ang the, the level of anger right now. Uh, this scenario was not. Uh, uh, this scenario was also disliked by many Indonesian, but that's one way to uh, go out from the dispute. Uh, I think the uh, the source of uh, disagreement is uh, giving amnesty to the military. But uh, having uh, on second scenario uh, uh, that there will be a new government. Uh, which is not coming from Tatmada or NLD, that may require uh, a long time to form and uh, a long time to uh, 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 dialogue because uh, currently there is C CRPH and um, um, uh, CRPH is coming from uh, the, uh, the, the winner of the election, which is the NLD. This is something that perhaps uh, the Tatmada will not like it and find uh, a, a person or a public figure that is not coming from both that require time, possible but require time and require a lot of uh, negotiation. Uh, it is not two, the way I see it, it is not two uh, parties that are uh, having dispute because NL, uh, behind the winning, uh, 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 the, the winner of the election, there are a number of ethnic nationalities. Even CRPH now try to negotiate with different uh, ethnic nationalities right now to convince them that the government that will be established by the new uh, elected uh, uh, government is the inclusive government, the democratic government that bring all the voices together. The uh, and they come up with the idea of federalism. This idea of, of federalism has been there for for years, even before. Uh, the uh, collapse of dictatorship by by junta in 2011 until now of 10 years after the uh, reform the idea of ref uh, the idea of um, federalism is not yet materialized so so CSCRPH uh, now is trying to convince uh, ethnic nationalities ethnic nationality groups to uh, uh, that the, the new government uh, will try to bring this uh, federalism come into uh, a picture. And the third one, uh, uh, the third, sorry, uh, the third scenario, ah, the third scenario is something that uh, Tatmada is now pushing by uh, sitting there in the, uh, uh, as the junta uh, uh, government and uh, em employ the state of emergency for one year and imposing a number of uh, uh, promises like continuing the uh, 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 progress in terms of uh, decreasing the infectious uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, continue uh, economic development, um, uh, preparing for uh, election. Uh, I think what we have seen uh, on, the, on, on the ground is that um people are not open or people reject uh on the idea of having re-election uh, uh the election last time was considered as uh, fair and uh we should have uh 
uh, people of Myanmar uh, wanted to have uh, the government that they have elected in November 2020. So the third scenario uh, will uh, be rejected by the people and of course will be rejected by NLD, but but pushed by uh, Tatmadaw. The, the fourth scenario is very dangerous, I think, uh, by imposing uh, uh, R2P. It is not only rejected by um, the country, but also uh, uh, will be rejected by uh, neighbor neighbor countries. Um, but we don't know yet. Uh, it's just for me, one thing that possibly can happen is scenario one. Uh, but it require military to back down and to negotiate with uh, NLD. And one perhaps one of the uh, negotiation uh, uh, item would be amnesty, which perhaps people in Myanmar will disagree. But the, the, the thing that more workable is the scenario one, uh, which actually uh, NLD, the, the, the winner of the election can stay uh, in power, can working, can, can govern the, the country but with number of conditions uh, proposed by by military. That's my response to Mahdi. Question. Yeah, thank you, Miss Yuyun. Um, actually, the same questions uh, goes to you, Tin So Hain. How do you think about this uh, fourth strategy uh, that Miss Yuyun has um, read from the Dr. Rizal Sukma? Uh, is it possible? or which one is, uh, do you think work best uh, for Myanmar? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Do you help me, Mbak Yuyun? So, uh, Tinzo, uh, uh, Mahdi from Compass Daily asked about uh, my opinion, your opinion now, in relation to four scenarios that proposed by Dr. Rizal Sukma written in Compass Daily in Bahasa Indonesia. So the first, the first scenario that he proposed in his op-ed was that um, Tatmadaw and NLD negotiate. Um, wait, wait. Uh, Tatmadaw and 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 uh, NLD negotiate uh, based on the um, suggestion from the international community, including ASEAN, and. And Tatmadaw returned the power to civilian government, but with the condition that uh, Tatmadaw will be given amnesty, and therefore and can 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 govern uh, the country. So that's the first uh, scenario. Second scenario is that this is a model of Thailand, in which uh, Thailand in that time choose uh, someone public figure which is not coming from Tatmadaw or NLD to govern the country. So that's the second option. Uh, third option, a third scenario is that the current scenario that uh, Tatmadaw is pushing right now, uh, Tatmadaw continue to govern the country with state of emergency um, and promise to come up with the re-election after one year uh, uh, to have the so-called proper uh, representative um, uh, in the parliament. Uh, the fourth scenario is to implement responsibility to protect as the protesters on the street have been calling for. But this scenario can be very difficult uh, because to be able to deploy uh, international uh, intervention require a Security Council approval. And in Security Council, there are two countries that are actually oppose the, is, uh, the, the situation in uh, Myanmar becoming international affairs, uh, which are China and Russia. So without, uh, and there is a consensus among uh, Security Council. So without uh, uh, the approval or, or if China and Russia fought out, uh, um, to implement R2P, then there will be no uh, uh, R2P implementation in mm. um, in the country. So 
this is for yeah so let let me add for but for me so in the ground strategy that the four scenario is kind of refer what is happening in here and what is our strategy in here so i'm i'm actually like for the uh, scenario 2 it's not the public figure that we are trying to do it like so uh, the the first one is uh, so the strategy already abolished because they trying to do an an constitution call so to so the strategy already you know uh, abolished so no more constitution scenario no more to the constitution in here so it means this is number one and number two is like uh, for for to for to to do the in team government in team government means so we have like um a scenario for that uh, we're trying to propose with the uh, CRPH for that is like so try to organize the in team government with like uh uh with uh with uh, ethnic political party who is ethnic political party EBB and also uh political party and like is so like a uh, strike committee member also have a some because we have a general strike so we also have proposed for the general strike committee member and so we have like some who have uh who are the leader of uh in in representing a kind of for the interior government and plus we are trying to do like the federal uh, federal army that to protect for for that so this is what we are trying to do for the interior government and also at the meantime so we are trying to um the blow we have some like draft uh federal democracy constitution so we are trying to do um in term federal democracy constitution for as a temporary to govern the nation then we 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 go to the uh federal democratic nation with the and then we were we were have a like uh conference for a national conference for to uh to to uh to work for the and uh, to finalize for the federal democratic federal democratic uh, uh constitution with all inclusively that we were govern the nation like that but for the like military um mm, for we are trying to military is kind of terrorism organized for now so they if they want to be part of the on reform we we issue that they they need about the transition and justice for that what they have to do so if they uh if they are willing to accept for the transition and justice so they will be part of the uh it can be part of the like federal democratic uh federal federal army for that that we will be proposed with the uh eu eu and another who will do part of the uh federal democratic army so this is what uh, we are trying to uh call for the nationwide and also dealing with the crbh for the uh it say is the uh, dialogue for that dialogue with this so for the dealing with it is not the uh problem with the Tamado and also NAD. So it the uh, issue it had been seen something year ago. It just affect for the Bami majority. It happened in another nationality in state like Kachin, uh, Shan, Karin, and Moon, and Rakhain. Whatever they, it happened in over seventy years. No, it's it's time to. I don't know how to say. It's kind of it's time to end the military cope and military. and did the shit for 21st century is no more return if we we must win this battle and we have we have the power of people and we have a power of uh, collective action that to end the dictatorship so we will not forget for that and we will take the action for as a transition and just who gave their life who gave their life in team now team now yeah this is i'm trying to apply for that option number 2 but it it will be more detail what we are going to go to that yeah so for and also for that for the r2 uh, r2b i'm 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 not willing to i'm not um, it's not easy to can r2b from the and uh, another kind but we are trying to do r2b by ourselves i mean myma r2b with a right to protect because see we don't have any weapon and we have only uh the protesting gear that cannot prove for the real real bullet just simply but 
even they do, they, they even they annul any day and they shoot with the rear gun to them and 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 protest at them. It's time to write to protest for our people, write to protest for who is protest peacefully. It our we will call right to protest Bami, Bami uh, Myanmar, right to protest in here. So we believe the power of people in Myanmar, and we will use we will utilize the most we will utilize as much as possible the power of people in here and also we were asked support from the international community like Samuel, like not legitimating the military cough like from the ASEAN ASEAN nation. So we need to stand kind of like don't don't communicate or don't do anything uh, don't accept or don't legitimate don't legitimate with the uh MSR or something and don't give the uh visa for them so like trying to try to stand with the people of the Myanmar. And this is what I want to see here. It's kind of multi day for the option number two. Uh, scenario number two. Yeah. This is the but we also like the uh strike comedy that's um uh many nationwide strike comedy and also like CDM movement also trying to work together to to empty the sheet I say to get the come on uh like come on strategy thank you thank you Tin uh, for your answer uh I still have uh one questions uh for you Tin and uh if possible could you explain uh what do you need most uh from regional and other countries to support uh the the fight from the people of Myanmar in uh, right now yeah so we need to work on from the what uh Singapore government did for the uh to stop uh transition of the international banking something like and it's like we we also uh, the uh ASEAN nation need to show it's not it's not the polity I mean it's not the polity it's kind of um Like it's kind of it's kind of genocide or it's kind of you know uh cry against humanitarian. I mean, so it's they they brutally kill the people with the one who don't have the uh, weapon. So it's not the polity, it's kind of people right to live and right to protect and also life. I mean, I mean life, people live. Everyone in, in Myanmar, everyone can have an info me. I also can be died today or tomorrow if I'm was if I'm arrested. Or someone people who almost over 50 million of people can die such kind of way in any time. And also like it's fear. I mean, so we shouldn't have fear anymore to I mean to to stay like peacefully, to sleep peacefully, I mean. We, we, we don't know when they were shoot up. We don't know when they were came arrested as, and we don't know why. It happened in here. Why, why we, what, what we did wrong for that? I mean, so stand with the people, not the military code, not the terroristic military. I mean, don't stand with us, stand with the people, stand with the truth. And show the solidarity and don't legitimate the terrorist organization. This is what I want to ask all the nation, uh, regional country and also ASEAN, ASEAN college. Yeah, this is what we want to demand. Yeah. Thank you, Tin. That's a strong uh, request. I think everyone here already listened and uh, yeah, uh, this is a tough moment. At, uh, let's, uh, people of Myanmar and also you and everyone who from Myanmar knows that uh, many Indonesian, uh, many Asian people uh, uh, stand with, uh, stand by with uh, Myanmar people. Um, is there any questions from the journalists who attend this uh, press conference on Zoom or either in YouTube? If not, I will end this uh, press conference. 
very sad that Dr. Sasa from CPRH cannot join us. Uh, I myself uh, found difficulties to contact him directly, but uh, I, but um, I hope everyone, uh, including Dr. Sasa, is uh, okay. In so there, there are no uh, more uh, questions. Uh, I will end the session, uh, perhaps uh, to give a closing statement from the uh, from the speakers. Start with uh, Miss Yuyun first, and then from Tin. Thank you. Unmute, Mbak Yuyun. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, since this first conference is entitled uh, uh, on the Can Democracy Win? Uh, we uh, experiencing the military dictatorship in, in the past. Uh, we Indonesians believe that democracy will win. And I agree with uh, Tinzo that the power is in actually in the people. And that's something that we also believe uh, uh, very, uh, very strongly. Uh, that the power is in the in the people and uh, uh, please uh, uh, ensure that uh, the people in, in Indonesia uh, support you and uh, we are we continue to um, uh, we, we would like to continue to show our solidarity in the situation of Myanmar uh, uh, this is the region that we we are in this is the only place that we we, we can live in until uh, our uh, children and grandchildren and so on. And what happened in Myanmar, of course, uh, will impact uh, the region. So that is why we care, and that is and and that is why we would like to express support. But it is in our belief that a democracy will win in Myanmar. Thank you. Next, Tin. And in, in, in Myanmar, we have always motto that when we compare with the justice and injustice, so justice always will win, but it will take time. And also for the democracy, so we must win. Definitely we must win for the justice and democracy. So we, and we mean all the generation, generation Y, generation Age, generation Z, and also generation F5, even my niece and nephew, you know, my niece and nephew, they like, they are like seven or eight years. It's time, they are, it's time to, time to, you know, read the poetry about, you know, the beauty of the nature and the beauty of art and the beauty of human. Something, it's time to learn what they are. I mean, it knows their heart, but in my hometown, they, they lighted the handle and they are shouting that to end the dictatorship, it's our duty, it's our responsibility. How, how, how can we give our generation this kind of, you know, I mean, the darkness or, you know, it's hard. That's why we must win. I mean, we need to fight totally for it. But also our generation, for our generation about whatever. So we must win. There's no way to lose. We already win, and we must win for that. This is this is what I want to say at the end. Sorry for my emotion. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Tinso. Everyone, I think uh, I agree uh, what Tin just said that the revolution will win. Therefore, I will ask, uh, I will invite everyone to end this press conference. Uh, can you open your videos? And we do the three finger salute to give solidarity for the uh, people of Myanmar. Thank you, Mas Awi. Yes. Let's do the three finger salute. This is very important. This is a message for people of Myanmar that we care and then we will help you. You're not alone in this uh, task to fight back the coup and the junta military in uh, Myanmar. Salute.
Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining this uh, press conference. Thank you, Tin. Thank you, Ms. Yiyun. Hopefully, you are in a good shape and bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Damar. Thank you, Safnat.